Hi everyone, it's Karen here for Artist Live with a new video uh, tutorial, live tutorial. I'm going to create an art journaling page in one of my journals. So I'm just going to turn the camera around and just thank everybody for coming. Oops, hold on. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is, hold on, the journal page that I made. And just need to find the right angle for it. Sorry about that. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to figure out where the angle is. Oopsie. Okay. Is that good? And you guys can hear me well, which is good. Don't like that you can see the book. Mm. Okay, now we're good. So this is a journal page that I made. I want to show you this really cool uh, art journal that I bought. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be an art journal, but it was one of my travels to Ecuador when I went to teach last May. And look at the front cover. This is I didn't make this. This came like this. It is really cool. And, I, and it's all made from recycled paper. Oops, that's from another thing. So if I want to show you the pages, how they look like. You see how huh? they're made out of that the recycling type of paper. And um, let's see here, I'll show you another page. Like it's even like embossed and stamped. So it's really cool. So it already comes with like texture. And um, this is supposed to be uh, um, a hummingbird. And the symbol is there too. I'm not sure why they put these holes there, but I did try to cover them as much as I could. Uh, it is pretty thick, which is nice because it takes the media really well. Uh, however, I do have to I have to be careful a little bit with the edges because some of them, like when it gets too wet, it rips. But we're gonna start, and um, I'm gonna just uh, put a light uh, clear gesso on top. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I did this the first time around, but it doesn't really matter. I just want to put a layer of this just so it um, protects it a little bit. So I'm going to just add a thin coat of this onto my... This is not enough. So I don't remember. I don't think I did this in the, in the other one, but it never hurts to put in some gesso in places it really helps to protect the paper so just an extra step i mean i guess i'm going to do now I'm at the bottom of this pot so um there we go so i'm going to do this side and it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a layer of protection so I'm really at the bottom of this. Uh -huh. And I did want to put the clear one because I didn't want to cover even the color of this recycled paper. But I'm realizing that I don't have enough. Let's see if I can. I don't have another one right here. I have to go get it. So we're going to have to deal. Oh, there we go. That's good enough. Okay, this is good. Okay, that's good. And although this one I made like it's kind of yellow and green tones, I'm on, I did put some glue in it too. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it just tones a little bit different, so I just don't have two of the same um, pages in my same in the same journal. So, well, hi Janusz. Okay, so there we go. And Didi's here if you need if you have any questions. Uh, she's here to answer any of the questions, okay? And link every, anything you need onto it. Okay. All right. That's good. So now that's that. This can go in the garbage because I literally finished it. And I'm just going to dry it up.
So Didi is saying that the holes could be for different binding. It could be. The one thing that it did have is that it had these like uh, plastic uh, tie wraps that basically held the album together so it doesn't like, bend. So I don't know if they did those holes just for the, for you know, binding it and holding it together. Because they were pretty tough to cut. And then they had these for the uh, for the actual binding. So I'm not sure, but it's an interesting point that maybe they had they wanted to put different binding and then change their minds. But I did buy two of them and they both had the same thing. So that's why I'm thinking they were more for like holding it together. Okay, it doesn't have to be fully dry. It's okay. I am going to um, do the next step, and that is using. Uh, this stencil. This is by the Crafters Workshop. It's called uh, Cells Something Cells. Oh, it's, uh, I will. I, I, everything will be linked. Uh, Didi will put it on. But for those of you who are watching it after, everything is linked be, linked below. And um, I should have looked up the name, but I know it's um, it has to do with cells. They look like kind of like body cells and things like that. So it's really cool. I am. Um, I'm going to create a pattern, but not everywhere, just in some areas. And I'm going to use some of the uh, modeling paste, the matte modeling paste. It's different than the light paste. If you've used both, you'll notice a difference. This one is more looks like a gel, while the other one looks more like whipped um, fondant. Uh, so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start from the top, and I'm going to, to create this. I'm going to create this. Uh, pattern going down but I kind of want to do it kind of like a mountain because that is where the tree is going to be so cell theory that's the name of it cell theory and the links will be below in the in the in the comments so you can always look it up after okay so you see it's really cool as you can see, the sun is shining and it's somehow creating patterns in my, I don't know, I have some sunlight here. Uh, let me put some more light here for you. So I'm going to continue on and I don't care if it mucks it up a little bit just because um, it just gives more texture, right? So it's okay if I put it on top and then continue on. And I want to cover basically this whole bottom and corner as much as I can. I love, I don't know if you've tried these brushes before. I just actually got them and I, I'm regretting not having them earlier. They're actually so much better than a, than a palette knife. They're soft and they just give a really good um, finish to all the, all the things. Um, what I like about this also is that um, I can get into oops, I can get into the small areas with it too. I really actually really like these brushes. Somehow I don't know why I never had them before. I see everybody using them, but I don't know why I never had them. And they're really cool. I know I'm sorry. I don't know why it's so dark. Oh, I know what happened. I didn't turn on the light above me. Let me just do that. Somehow, somehow it's dark here. I don't understand. I think it's because the sunlight is coming in at a weird angle. So I hope you can see well. Um, the nice thing about these brushes also, they're really easy to clean. So that's really cool. Um, I didn't put actually didn't put that on the on the list the DD the, the the brush. I just realized that because um because I've been I I just got it after I did this list. I should have added it so um I'll I will link it up to the actual um video after. So if you guys want to see it then just come and, and I will link it to that after. Uh, oh, Elaine is asking what time it is. It is 2 o'clock in the afternoon my time. It's Eastern Standard Time. 
and just somehow I don't know why because I've always done the show at the same time this happens to be very very sunny today I'm not exactly sure why today from all days does it happen it has to be shining this way and I think it's probably maybe because the earth has turned it's because I've had it two o'clock before in the winter but maybe that that's an hour earlier I don't know I'm not sure what the reasoning is but it's like a really weird this one light one strip here just try to ignore it sorry about that okay so here is a uh, just show you from close-up it just adds even more texture to the already really cool texture that I have in the in the journal um, so yeah so I'm gonna dry let's see if I can like get that link for you guys uh, while I'm drying uh, oh do I see it well? Is it fuzzy? I can't tell if it's fuzzy or not. I can't like, uh, I'm trying to get more light here. Just answer if it looks fuzzy or not, or it, are you like actually seeing it well? Somehow the dark is not helping. Okay, so let me see. Um, Okay. okay, so I'll eventually get it all. And just getting, trying to log in here to be able to view you that the link. Okay. Okay, so this is, I mean, the nice thing about these is that they dry fairly nice. Okay, let's see if I got. Oh, it might not be. Okay, so I can't seem to find it. So I will look it up and. Uh, I will look it up and I will put it at the bottom of the link in the video uh, of, on our YouTube channel because somehow I can't seem to do this at the same time as looking it up. So, okay. So this is dry. I hope it's not fuzzy. I feel really bad. I just don't know why this, I wish I could cover this light somehow because then it would stop shining on me. Let's see if I can do something. Okay, will that help? I don't know if it will help, but this is not gonna stay. Okay, never mind. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, so uh, one of the cool things that I recently got was actually something designed by Dee Dee herself. Okay, did that help? Oops. There we go. No, it didn't help. Uh, this is frustrating. I don't know what to tell you. I'm trying. Um, anyway, so something designed uh, by Didi herself. And uh, it's uh, from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. It's this uh, tree. Okay. This is the tree that... Now the light is on it. Okay, so this is the tree. It's called a tattered tree. Just correct me if I'm wrong on that one, sorry. Um, and I wanted to originally stamp it right on top, but somehow it was too, this is like such a rough surface that I wasn't able to do that. So what I did is I stamped it on some tissue paper. And this tissue paper is really cool. It's called um, Script, uh, French Script by Canvas Core. Uh, Dee Dee will link it up and um, I actually stamped it on this and then cut it out so I'm going to show you okay. so let me just stamp it I'm not the best stamper so bear with me sometimes I have to do two different 
images to make it um, okay there we go oh yeah it came out good sometimes it doesn't it all depends on me um, okay so and so I did this as you can see and then I actually ripped it hold on out of the out of the paper and I actually even ripped around it I wanted to make it look as if it's part of the background so I ripped it all around there we go I didn't go all of it. I did want to have some of the writing around the tree. So that's why I just kind of ripped it on the shape of the tree as much as I could. And I think it needs a little bit more here. Okay. And I'll show you what I did after that. Sometimes I have to remind myself of what I did. So, um, before I glue this, I'm going to actually color. I think I colored first. So, um, what I did is I used some fluid acrylics. These are the colors that I used. And these are by, some of them are by Golden. And the other company that I have is, only one of them is Da Vinci. Um, but mainly I use these three because they're lighter. It's uh, Indian yellow hue, green gold, the cobalt turqu turquoise, and sap green. So what I did is I wanted them to be even a little bit more fluid. So I started combining them sorry, with some glazing medium, acrylic glazing medium. Okay. Yeah, hold on. What happened here? Mm, it's coming up. It's not, it's not enough. It's not coming out enough. I don't know why. It's maybe clogged. It shouldn't be clogged. But um, just put a put. Okay. That's a lot. Okay, so let me divide that out. Of course, now I, when I pour, I pour it a lot. Alrighty. And um, I just use this to kind of color in the background. Um, so. And um, using the paintbrush and then going in with my wipes, I just wanted to give it a light hue in the background. So it worked really well with the wipes. And you see it's already coming out a different color. I sometimes don't even try and it already does it for me. Um, so I want to make it a little bit darker here at the bottom. I'm like upset that there's the light is not working properly here. I'm not sure what the problem is, but I try my best. It's all I can do with the conditions. Um, I am going to mix it with a little bit of the blue. This is the, not blue, this is turquoise, cobalt turquoise. And um, And I just like it when the two greens, the green and the turquoise mix together, they kind of make it a different, a different uh, tone, which is really nice. And it's nice because the areas where I didn't put the, when if I missed, let's say, any, any of the 
gesso, then they basically look darker, which is a really nice combination. I'm going to add some more. That might be some of the darker color, but just a little bit. Because I think it think it still needs some darkness more at the bottom. And the nice thing about the glaze is that it makes it easier to kind of rub and move around. So that helps in that regard. Let me put a little bit more glue. Um, just wish it wasn't so dark. I don't know how to fix that. What I like is that when you wipe it after you use the wipes, this the actual design comes out underneath. So it looks really good. I'm going to add some of the yellow now for the top. Yellow hue. And, oops. Oh, that's too much. So, yeah, so I'm going to just grab it from here. And some of this. And just the, all the colors mixed together just looks so good. Okay. Anything? I need a new wipe. What do you guys think? It's getting too messy here. So I didn't use to some, Dee Dee's asking you guys if you art journal. I didn't art journal before. I started only a thing last year. And I, I, it's almost like I didn't see the point of it. I was like, oh, I'm just making art in canvases. What's the point of an art journal? But I find that um, once I started doing it, I realized that not only is it, you know, a lot of people use it for like experimenting and things like that, but it was actually like an emotional release for me. I think I've expressed that before in some of my other journals. Um, it was as if it helps like release some kind of um, emotion that you are feeling and it kind of takes care of it for you, kind of to say. It. I mean, it was, I mean, that's what journals were for originally, right? Like people used to write how they felt and it used to help them um, release those emotions. I never kept a journal. I always felt that I didn't want anybody to come and kind of find it and read it. So I never actually kept that. Um, but art journaling, it's a little bit different because you can actually hide some of the things and sayings and just express it through your art. Um, as you can see, I'm continuing to work on things here, kind of making this hill. Oops, now the, now the light is coming in this direction, and I would like it to cover as much as I can. Oops, hope I didn't. All right, I'm trying to kind of cover things without moving everything. It's not working for me. Okay. I apologize, I don't know what happened, why I have all this light everywhere. But, I mean, I hope you can still see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of patting it and going around and creating this really cool texture. I'm going to get it closer so you can see. There, there, there it focused. And it just, I just think it looks really cool. Um, and it blends really nicely in the background. So that's what I like about it. Okay, I'm um, just the only thing, the other, other thing that I did is I added a little bit of more yellow. Let me mix that a little bit with the, with the fluid because it helps. Okay, so. Okay, so this is just kind of to add a little bit here. 
think I went and exaggerated a bit on this, but I feel like it needs some of the yellow here. I will add, I will use some, um, how do you call this? I will use some white gesso after, so it kind of tones the yellow down, so don't worry, I did just kind of to create, a, I don't know, a yellow sky or something, if that's the right word. Um, imagining this is the sky, not exactly, but um, okay. So that's basically kind of my background. And if you use the glazing medium, what's nice about it is that um, you can really, it helps you like kind of blend everything and because it stays wet longer. Okay, so there we go. So that's kind of my background. Um, and um, let me just put a little bit more of this here, this darker color here since I have it and I don't want to waste it. So I hate wasting. So let's just put it in and it will just be a little bit more dark. That still looks really cool. Yeah, because I just really despise wasting. So I'm going to um, use as much as I can just so I don't waste it. Okay. The only other thing is, uh, besides cleaning here, is I just want to just again go lightly over it. This is what, if you go lightly over the pattern, uh, you're going to get the pattern back, which is the cell theory one. Okay. So let me... Put some things away for a second and I'll show you the next step. So, okay, let me dry it up a little bit. Um, I think the sun is here, starting to behave now, which is good. So, just drying it up in the meantime helps. And here is the, finally I found the, this is the, for the brush. I just linked it while I'm drying. That's the small brush. There's also a bigger one. Let me see if I can find, yeah, this is the, I'll get you the link for the bigger one. They're not as expensive. This one is like $4, which is really not so bad. And the other one is um, like six seventy-five or something. It's not so bad. It's a really good. There is. I just sent you the two links, and I will post them for those who are watching that are not watch, not watching it live. So there you go. Yay! We found it. Okay. So now that it's dry, and you see how quickly it dried, which is really nice, and you can see the pattern and everything. It just looks like roots or something. You know, like um, underneath the sediments, underneath the ground. That's just what it reminds me of. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys or not, but that's what the kind of the idea that I was going with. Um, so now we're going to add the tree. Okay, there we go. It's going to go there. And I'm going to use some soft matte gel. And I don't know what it is. I'm a lot. I love trees. I'm very much into trees and birds and butterflies. Those are my three things. Oh, and dream catchers. I think I've been in this theme of all those things for quite a while. And um, I don't know what it is. I just really love that. Uh, I'm going to glue this on. So of course you put it at the bottom. Um, And seal it. And because of the tissue paper, this is a really cool tissue. It's very thin. 
and translucent. So I just like that you stamped on it and it just looks like everything is part of the of the background. And it still looks like it has script right there. Uh, the other thing that I did is I used the rest of the pieces that I ripped. Now nothing goes to waste. So I really wanted to include them. So I included them here on the just little pieces, whatever I have, and I think I even ripped some more. Um, so let's see. This is this is the type of pieces that I use to kind of cover these holes that I don't like. So there, I covered one of the holes. And this, I'm going to cover the other one with this one. So even just using little pieces helps. Maybe not that one. Um, this can go here at the bottom, just because it has a straight edge. There we go. And I'm going to add some more to it. Oh, no, I still have, what am I talking about? I still have some more. So... I just think that it looks really good when it's it's a it I make it look as if it's coming from underneath the paper, underneath the layout, which is I think the kind of the idea that I'm trying to do. Um, and yeah, some here and some here. Let me just put some of this. Um, I think it's still missing a little bit here, so I'm going to grab some more. And let's see. So, some more maybe here at the bottom. What I like about it is that when it's ripped, it's not even, which makes it, like, um, much, uh, Oops, no, that's not what I meant to do. I want to maybe add, it's missing some, some here. Hold on. There we go. Kind of link it. And some here, I don't want to cover all the pattern, the whole pattern, pattern, just in some areas. And it kind of makes it look like, I don't know, earth, I don't know. Every person, I guess, will have their own imagination about how things are supposed to be. But I just like it. Okay, there we go. So there you have it. Okay. So just to seal it. And I'll show it to you from closer. I think I might have to you see like so. Right now it looks like it's part of the background. I am going to just for a second, I do want to maybe seal these here. These holes. Um what did I just do with the paintbrush? Is it this one? Okay. Um hold on. So so this is how you find solutions for holes. And just put them on. Why not? Anyways, you can make it look as if it's part of the background. So it looks perfectly okay that it's just in the middle of nowhere. So there we go. So that is uh, basically the tissue paper that I added. Um, I just, I love the script part of it. It's really, just really nice. So that works out well. Okay. And then I'm going to close this and I'm going to use the white gesso to kind of blend it all in, right? So what the, how the gesso will help is to blend in the different, a, uh, why is it crooked? Is it me that's crooked? This must have moved. Okay. There. So I'm going to use just a white gesso. Um, I guess that's 
similar paintbrush. Let me just clean it up. So I'm very not, I'm not the best as, at cleaning my paintbrushes. I'm very bad at taking care of them. That's the one thing. Um, I keep them in water for a while, forget about them. And it's not the smartest thing to do, but I'm just, I forget. That's my problem. I finish a project and then I want to just, you know, go and just do something else. And I just don't wash them right away. Okay, so now I'm going to blend the edges to the background. And sometimes it helps to do it with your fingers because it really blends that blends it in. Uh, and notice I didn't dry the gel. I mean, I just find gesso and gel um, blend in together very nicely. So you don't really need to uh, dry it in between. I mean, you can, but I don't want to waste time now drying this. So. so what I'm doing is I'm basically just Kind of patting it, patting the uh, with the paintbrush, and creating this not only texture but this blending uh, onto it. I am going to use a little bit of the green, and uh, that's going to help also to like kind of blend things. Oops, my, my bracelet is making a lot of noise. So between the gesso and the green, even if we combine it a little bit, it kind of blends everything together. Um, if you can see here in the corner, you can see how it's kind of blends in and you can tell that the paper wasn't part of the background, as if the whole background had um, that script on it. So I just find it helpful that way to play around with the blending. So. Blending is a tedious, I guess, um, not work, but like part of the creating. But it actually kind of relaxes me. I kind of just, it's a monotonous kind of uh, how do you part. And I just kind of go and continue on. And it relaxes me to just pad things around. And... And that's basically, you see, I'm kind of slowly, slowly bending it, blending, bending it, blending it all into the background. So I combine the gesso with a little bit of the green fluid acrylic. That was too much. And, and it just all blends really nicely. In. So here I'll show you again. You see how it's all blending into the background? Um, and that is the key. I mean, you could put the the you could put the tissue paper first, but then when you put in color, what's going to happen is that it's gonna cover all of it. And you don't sometimes you don't want everything to be covered. You want some of it to just stay. So so it helps in that sense that so you can just blend the edges instead of. Um, having it the other way around. I'm guessing it would probably work too if you actually went and, um, yeah, how do you call this, and put the tissue paper first. I just worry about covering the image and all the writing, so I find this is easier. More tedious, but easier. Um, we can put some of the yellow here now. So, um, hold on. The yellow comes out somehow a lot, um, and the yellow just because I have the yellow and the on the top, it's easier if I if I blend the yellow here because that's why I use green at the bottom, right? So it helps to blend the yellow in a little bit more. So there, you see how you kind of blended the tree. I'm going to blend it here a little bit more. Just like the writing around the tree. It just made it look as if it's part of the background. Okay. There we 
go. And then let's go on this side now. I'm just going to turn this around a little bit because I can't reach it without going off screen. So a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the white. Maybe too much. So does that make sense? Um, uh, what I'm saying, like it's just it's just a, a good way of blending anything, especially tissue paper, blends really nicely in because it's so thin. So okay, and just a little bit more of the green for the bottom. comes out better than the yellow, I guess. I mean, if you just, sometimes I just go and put the paint alone and it doesn't fully blend. You actually really need that white gesso to blend it. It helps much more with when you have the gesso. Because the gesso kind of blurs the edges of the tissue paper. While the paint because it's so liquidy, it's more translucent, so it doesn't have the same effect. So even though I think, my, my theory is that even though if I put the tissue paper first and then I cover it in the color, I will still have to do the blending technique with the gesso because the color is so translucent that you will still see the edges of the actual um, you will still see the edges of the tissue paper where you put it before or after. So that's my theory. I guess we could put it to test in another project, but it makes sense to me. Okay, just not to waste the yellow. Let's see where could we could go. Oh, we didn't do some here. So there we go. So that makes sense. Okay, so you see how it's it's kind of all blended in, almost all of it. I'm gonna do just a little bit more here. And um and I need a new wipe because now it's becoming yellow here. And the nice thing about these colors is they all blend in together. So you see I made a mistake there. I put in color where it wasn't supposed to and then I just fix it, which is really nice. Okay, there we go. So now it's all blended in. And I think I want to put this back. So hold on. Too much to waste. I don't want to waste it. Okay, there we go. And okay, so now to the next step. One second. So this was how this was the blending, as you can see, with the white gesso. Oh, and look at you know what? It turned out a really different color than this one. Can you tell? But I like it too turn out really nice, very bright. Okay, so let me, uh, hold on, let me dry it up a little bit. Okay, now, I took a, a black uh, gelato, just a black one, and basically just created a border with it. Just I find it the easiest. I mean, you could do. I, I could also do this with like black gesso, but I find black gelato works really quick. So you can just literally run it over here, run it all over. I don't want to get it on the oven. There we go. And then 
Just with a little bit of white. Oh no, even with a white you can do it. The white works well. Okay, white or a wet finger. Just kind of. Uh, you can blend in the, and make it create a really cool edge. If you want it more distressed, then you can um, just blend it into the page. Um, on to the last slide. I just find that in all my artwork so usually when I put a border it makes it look so much better so, uh, where is it? Okay. so I just want to add a little bit more here kind of too much and you can also use your finger obviously if you want to create kind of like a, a more blended effect um, I like kind of bringing it in sometimes. It distresses it. So there is like the actual border for it. And then, I can't remember if I did this or that, but I, you can do it either with black gesso or with this. And just add about a bunch of the gelato and a little bit of water. And and basically just splatter. I just want to add some splatters onto the background. Let's see. Ah. Yeah, those are working. Somehow we miss these splatters up. Um I don't know. Originally, I wanted to put birds onto this project, but I tried and it didn't look nice, so I took them off. But these kind of look like birds flying. I don't know if you can tell. To me, they look like little birdies flying, uh, finally. Um, so... So that's the actual um, layout, but like the background. And then I just put a title. I'll show you. And then I'm done. What a mess. Okay. So the last thing, let me just dry this these dots because otherwise, um, and the last thing I did is I added a title. Uh, I use these uh, words from Seven Dot Studio, the, the Didi Design, it's the Fortune Teller Collection. And um, let's see, I'm going to pick... I like this. Uh, let's see, what did I write in the other one? I don't want to write the same thing. The other one I wrote, Trust Your Heart. And this one... I want to use, uh, I'm going to use the one that says See Beauty Everywhere. So this is the title. It's from the Seven Dot Studio uh, word stickers from Fortune Teller Collection, which will be li it's linked below. And um, hold on, I need scissors. So what I do is I usually just cut them up. So cut the words out. And these are great. I really love the Seven Dot Studios um, designs. Uh, in terms of, I mean, not only their beautiful designs, but I mean in terms of like the way they come. It comes with the tags and the word stickers and the, um, how do you call this? And the actual, uh, like, elements, stickers, and just so many different options that you can add to your papers. So it's really, or to your layouts or to anything, basically. So... They're really good that way. I'm just cutting the words out. Mm -hmm. and, and I use these a lot for titles or for just adding some message, a nice message to a project. 
Okay, there we go. So now we have the three words, and I wanted them, if you can see, like it comes with um, different, uh, you know, like sayings, but some of them are in black, which fitted perfectly with my design, so that's why I wanted it in black. And I'm gonna use some soft gel to basically glue it, as usual. And let's see, I need a paintbrush. Am I dirty? The dirty paintbrushes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, there's one beauty everywhere. Okay, and just because the, oh, a trick, so things don't move on you. I know these are stickers, but sometimes they tend to move on you. If you put like a lot of gel onto your paintbrush, they will not move, which I discovered. Okay, so this is the this is the one. Oops, and. Um, the last thing I did, and hold on, let me dry it up a little bit, is that I'm just checking to make sure I didn't miss any steps because I've like gone off air and then realized I've missed steps and, it, and, and I feel bad. So just checking, this is the last thing. I mean, I, you can skip this step, it's not a big deal. Okay, and this dries really quickly, which is nice. Um, so the last thing I did is I added, um, uh, how do you call it? I, I circled, no circle, sorry. I went around the word with a marker. I don't know, I'll get my, here, no, no, this is the white one. I'm looking for the black marker, hold on. Again, I have so many white ones. Um, happen to my black markers. Of course when I'm looking for something it's not where it's supposed to be. Okay never mind I don't know where it is. Okay maybe I can do it with this one. Okay so I just wanted to create a little bit of a line around it. So this is uh, my pilot, pilot pen. Um, I just think it adds a little bit. I think I use my Posca pen. Posca pens I have to tell you are the best the best markers out there in terms of acrylic markers, better than the Sharpies, I find. The Sharpie acrylic marker is not as good as the pasta pens, and I find them really, really good. So, so that's basically it. Um, thanks for joining me. Hold on, I'm gonna... Um, I'm, I'm away next week. I'm traveling, but uh, you'll have another show next week again. So this is the final. And this is, I'll just show you the original. It's a little bit different, more white. I left, I think, more white space in this one. But I do like actually how this turned turn out because <laughs> I love color. So that's basically the difference, I guess. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And see you next week. Bye. Um, what happens? This always happens. Ah, this always happens to me. Somehow it doesn't want to, doesn't let me write anything down. Let's try this. Come on, something, let me do something. Ah, okay, I hope this is records it because I'm trying, sorry about that. I, still, I know I'm still on, but it's not letting me somehow write anything down. I don't know why. Let me try to see this, Let's just make sure that how many times have I been here waiting for this to work? Huh? Tell me. It is so weird.
Come on. This is so annoying. Bye, guys. Bye, Lydia. Bye, Janush. Bye, Didi. Thank you. Bye, Dawid. Okay. I'm still on, I know. I don't know what to do. This always happens. Why is this going to work? Oh my goodness gracious. Ah! What's the matter with this? Okay, well, bye everyone. I'll still stay here to see if I can figure out how to save it. Okay, I'm trying to see if it will if I write something somewhere else, it will work here, but it doesn't. Please wait. Uh, please wait for preparing. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. Mm, it is so annoying. Good night, Elaine. Hope you sleep well. can't do anything. I don't know what to do. It's going to cancel the whole thing. I can't even stop recording, uh, broadcasting. Oh my god. This doesn't let me do anything. this Thank you. 